Touch the leg. Oh, and to wish everyone touched the leg. Mm. 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 And I hope everyone is doing well. Mm. 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 And I hope everyone is doing well. And so the Dharma teaching today is the 37, the text is the 37 practices of the Bodhisattvas. Um, so whether we are <coughs> practicing the Dharma or studying the Dharma, listening to Dharma teachings, uh, and uh, whether we're doing any kind of virtuous activity, um, of which there are many kinds, uh, there's so many different kinds of virtuous activity, you can't really uh, go through all of them because there's so many different kinds. But um, yeah, whenever we're doing any of these kinds of activities, the, our motivation is extremely important. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, whether the virtue we are virtuous practice we are doing or the Dharma practice we are doing is with our body, our speech, or our mind. Um, any of these kind of activities, the motivation is always uh, extremely important. And in particular, um, uh, if we are practicing the Mahayana, if somebody is practicing the Mahayana, Mahayana Buddhism, then in particular in that context, the motivation is especially important. Uh, organization help um so uh, uh, and that's not only when we are studying a dharma or uh, practicing meditation or what have you or uh, listening to dharma teachings but if we're working for uh helping out and working for a Dharma center or different organizations or translating or doing any of these uh, activities, Dharma activities, um, it's a, we have to think uh, about our motivation and not uh, do these kind of activities just only for ourselves our own interest and also uh, not to that we shouldn't do these activities just because we are afraid of 
uh, samsara, the suffering of samsara for ourselves, and we want to escape uh, that suffering ourselves, um, we should uh, think about all the uh, sentient beings and uh, try to understand what is the cause of their suffering. Um, and then um, think about their suffering and the cause of their suffering. And then uh, think if I don't um, uh, help them, if I don't practice the Dharma and help with the Dharma for these sentient beings, then who will do it? Uh, it's my responsibility to help these sentient beings. This is uh, the motivation we should have. Ini tadi kunungan dosa ni ini tering cuci ni berjadi cuci ni dah muzik kami tu baby dah selang ni cuci mati res. So um, with that motivation, the text that we are studying today is the um, uh, 37 practices of the Bodhisattvas by Gelsi Mushu Togme. And within the text, there are the three uh, sections the virtue in the beginning, which is the introduction of the text, the virtue in the middle, which is the text itself, the main part of the text itself, and the virtue at the end, which is the conclusion. Mm-hmm. So um, I've explained two different uh, ways of um, uh, two different uh, topic outlines of the main part of the text. So it may be a little confusing, but actually it doesn't have to be confusing because it comes down to the same thing. Um, uh, and then uh, within the uh, main part of the text, there's actually a preliminary within the uh, virtue in the middle, which is the main part of the text. There's a preliminary. Uh, yeah, there's this section on the preliminary practices and or the practices which are preliminary, and then a section on the uh, main practices. Uh, Sumbasamjikonalabjalagiwachinatini <laughs> So, um, the, so these um, preliminary uh, practices, or um, yeah, it's, so there's the two sections of the main part of the text, which is the uh, preliminary practices and the main practice. And those are the same as the uh, causes of bodhicitta and then bodhicitta itself. So the preliminary uh, section is um, the section on the causes of bodhicitta. Mm -hmm. And the, the main part is the section on bodhicitta itself. And then which, within the section on <clears throat> the main part of bodhicitta itself, um, there's uh, the, uh, 
Chang Chang Sim Nui Shi Bidong Chang Sim Gi La Ba. Ah, there. Okay. Then there's the within the main part itself, which is the um, teaching on Bodhicitta itself. There's mm -hmm. the explanation of Bodhicitta itself, and then there's the explanation of uh, the trainings in Bodhicitta. So this explanation of the trainings of Bodhicitta, the practice of Bodhicitta. This is included within the uh, section on the main part. Oh, yeah. And this is uh, also within the section on the uh, practice of the individuals of the three different scopes. Mm. So then uh, within the section on the trainings in bodhicitta, there's two main parts, which is uh, the first being um, the explanation of the six paramitas, and the second is how to apply those practices to oneself. And we've now finished the section on the six paramitas, and now we're in the section on how to apply these practices to oneself. Mm -hmm. Tini Connecting so then uh, <coughs> so there's this two um sections on uh how uh, so, um there's a section on the six parameters and then the section on how to apply mm -hmm. that to oneself. And then now we're in the section on how to apply that, apply the practices to oneself. And within that uh, section that we're in now, there's seven parts. Um, and the first four of those seven parts are the four uh, teachings of, from the sutras, so-called, this is the, the kind of like, a, what they call these, these first four, so they're, they're called the teachings, four teachings of the sutras. And these are, uh, number one is uh, to uh, examine one's own mistakes and then eliminate those mistakes. And the second is to give up um, talking about the faults of other bodhisattvas. And the third is to give up attachment to the houses of your uh, patrons mm -hmm. and uh, you know, kind of like a friends and family. And then the fourth is to give up uh, speaking harsh mm -hmm. words. Those are the four uh, teachings of the sutras. And then there's a the three, the, the, the final three out of the seven are, um, how to uh, eliminate the 
afflictions, how to eliminate your own afflictions or negative emotions. And then it's the uh, fifth out of seven. And then the sixth is um, then uh, to uh, practice mindfulness and um, vigilance and benefit others uh, using mindfulness and vigilance. This is the sixth one. And the seventh one is to dedicate the merits. Uh, so now <clears throat> we've finished the four, uh, four teachings from the sutras and we're on the fifth out of these seven sections, which is um, how to eliminate one's afflictions. Mm-hmm. So this is the 35th verse, and it goes as follows. The practice of all the bodhisattvas is to slay attachment and the rest, mind's afflictions, at once, the very moment they arise, taking as weapons the remedies held with mindfulness and vigilance. For once the kleshas have become familiar, they'll be harder to avert. So this verse is about how to eliminate um, or abandon the affliction. So this has to do. This is comes right after the sec- the four teachings on the from the sutras, and it has to do with um, your own afflictions that uh, your you know personal afflictions that you are experiencing. How to eliminate those? The name de la Numumba Gomna Nimbo Dokawe, the Numumba Gomna, said his sixty door, Numumba Gomna Gomna said the entire tongue around the Japshadanti Munga Jack Shadow, Tenzula, Numumba Sigira, and Maripa, and Susama, the Numumba, that the Numumba de Nanzula Gom Gomshi. ก็มีชิ้นโบ้ที่เทพสอนน่ะทีนี้ดีละเงี้ยโบ้ก็จะเต็มไปในเงี้ยโบ้เต็มทุกมาเรศเป็นอะไรเงี้ยโบ้ก
uh, remedy, it won't be possible. We won't be able to um, get rid of the afflictions if we, uh, no matter how much we try. Um, so uh, when we are, uh, it's possible that we can become familiar with the afflictions in this way and become habituated to them. And whatever we're doing, or lying down, or standing up, or walking around, and so on, uh, we will always kind of uh, just um, we will always be uh, kind of habituating ourselves to the affliction, whatever we're doing, whatever activity, and. Um, if that happens, then it will be impossible to uh, eliminate them using the remedy, even if we uh, apply the remedy or try to apply the remedy to the afflictions, um, then it won't work. And uh, the afflictions are uh, these uh, kleshas, negative emotions such as um, Desire, ignorance, anger, jealousy, pride, and so on. Um, yeah. The nimbo nimbo kazu gom shu chumbo gom tawal na. The ne nimbo ten kabor kabores nimbo ten tu gumaris nimbo ten bay na nimbo ki ko nimbo balapa pang tu gumaris nimbo ki chin nimbo ten ma tu bay na nimbo ba pang tu gumaris nimbo. And so if we, uh, um, so if we're in the situation where we're really familiarized with the afflictions, then uh, <clears throat> even if we try to apply the remedy, uh, yeah, if we, even if we apply, try to apply the remedy and really um, uh, make a great effort to apply the remedy to the afflictions, uh, we won't really be able to use the remedy. We won't be able to practice the remedy. And if we can't uh, use the remedy, then we won't be able to eliminate the afflictions to, to reduce the afflictions. Mm. Mm. Ne but we never focus on our familiarization, the habit of how much we change, how much we gain. Did it get you Musum ya tobeda, tobela, paleo mares. Musum do. Tobeda, one for an itobe, one for an itobe, la caleo mares, cumsia boti, chanta vena, combat. Any Maranzo, Karina, dupure, Karina, do new moment, pang to good. The young new moment is shooting with the computers and a caleo. You try to put detergent to wash, it's difficult to wash away. So there's the verse from the uh, uh, Bodhicharya Avatar by Shantideva, where he says, uh, There's nothing in the world that is um, 
um, there's nothing in the world that you can't do, or there's nothing in the world um, that uh, will be difficult to do if you uh, habituate yourself to it and practice it. Um, so it means that whether we're practicing virtue or doing any other kind of um, uh, activity or um, uh, work, uh, if we habituate ourselves to doing that activity, whether it's virtue or anything else, and uh, uh, practice it over a long time and habituate ourselves to doing that, then it will, it will always become easy in the end, no matter what it is, we can do anything. Um, so then this is related to uh, also another saying which says that um, uh, to, uh, to meditate is not important, but rather it's to uh, familiarize and habituate, which is important. Um, uh, because there's a two words which are similar in Tibetan, and gom and the kom. And so gom is like a meditating and we always consider it very important. We should meditate for one hour or two hours or something like that um, to do that a meditation session, uh, the gom. But actually that meditation, that gom is not as important as the habituation, um, uh, the gompa, which, uh, is um, it means that we kind of like a, habituate ourselves and change the pattern uh, uh, within ourselves, change our, our own patterns of thinking and so on, and habituate and um, familiarize, familiarize ourselves with um, with whatever happens to be. Uh, so, actually, the uh, so the latter is actually the real purpose, that's the most important thing. Um, and the reason why we meditate and have a session of meditation wherever, uh, whatever type of meditation we're doing, the reason why we're doing that, the purpose of doing that is to <clears throat> create this uh, familiarization or the, um, that habituation in ourselves. Um, so, uh, yeah, so uh, this is important that we don't uh, make the mistake of getting uh, uh, more concerned with the meditation sessions, sitting meditation for however long, one or two hours, but then we don't consider the real purpose of that, which is to um, uh, habituate ourselves and form its, uh, habits within ourselves and become, become uh, completely familiarized with whatever a practice, whatever um, the goal of that practice is, compassion and so on. So, mm. Yeah, so when we uh so the purpose of a meditation, sitting meditation, the and doing meditation sessions, the gomba purpose of that is to uh, habituate ourselves, familiar ourselves, the gompa. Uh, so whether we're practicing compassion or emptiness, uh, things like that, uh, we have to kind of like infuse our mind with that, so that we have that habit, and it's not just restricted to the meditation session. Um, and uh, then there was the, uh, but then the other hand, uh, if we get um, uh, habituated to the afflictions as is talked about here in this verse, 
then uh, this is the other side of the coin. This is the other side of it that uh, this would be something we should avoid is to get uh, habituated to the afflictions. Because then once we get habituated to the afflictions, it's um, really difficult to, uh, <clears throat> to get rid of them and reverse them. So it's kind of like a cloth. If we have a cloth that we haven't washed in so long and it becomes, um, we leave it for several years without washing it and it's, there's, uh, the dirt is like a, kind of infused within the cloth and it's really hard to get that, uh, that cloth clean and get the dirt out of it. So this is an analogy for this mm -hmm. idea. Can you eat that? They do new mumba com macho bachi, the kitchen, com macho bachi, com she chow macho bachi, the kitchen for this, the lado, new mumbo comna, nimbo doca vest, and you shoot samba, nimbo doca vest, they do tang around the carriage or dinner, tamboni, new mumba de, com macho watch, com she mati watch, that the kitchen should never chish. So the real crucial point, the most important point here is that we have to prevent ourselves from getting habituated to the afflictions, the kleshas. Um, we have to prevent ourselves in the first place from getting into the habit uh, of those afflictions and kleshas. Um, because uh, as it says here, um, which uh, this line that Tugula has just now explained, uh, once the kleshas have become familiar, they'll be harder to avert um yeah so it's just as said in this line <clears throat> if we don't prevent ourselves in the first place from getting into the habit of the kleshas or getting familiarized uh with the uh kleshas then it will be very hard to use the remedy to uh get rid of them those kleshas and um, so it's like if you let the trash pile up for too long, then uh, at the end, because you let it go and you let it pile up, it's really a lot of work to get that, to get rid of it, to clean it up. Can you that? That day comes to Baba, Tangarangula. Comsi, you mumba de comsi, tambo, kazi chuna, and comsi matena ya bores ra. Comsi mate, machume, comba, comsi matebegi, tap carriers and amaran. Then in Della Tenshi, keep with your buttons on this. That tap to the temper the shishi needless. That temper the shishi needy, Marandolo Cadu in a yambol yuna. They need the new mumba de. So the uh, so this is the crucial point. The most important point is to, in the first place, not allow ourselves to become habituated to the glaciers and the affliction. <clears throat> so that being the case, <clears throat> what? How do we do that? What is the method to avoid doing that? And that is written here in the. Uh, in the line before, the third line, taking as weapons the remedies held with mindfulness and vigilance. This is the uh, method to prevent ourselves from becoming habituated to the patients is to use the mindfulness and vigilance. That's really the key to it. Um, as much mindfulness and vigilance that we have um, and that we're able to practice, then uh to that extent we will uh avoid becoming habituated to the 
あれ、まれ、いいナンバーシェバディコソン。だ、テンバーでシシニ、テンバーでシシニでコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソンスナディコソ
So this uh, uh, word, this Tibetan term burjom to uh, destroy upon arising, this is a um, a term that's used in the pith instructions. Garden, flower garden. In the bush, chilo, chilo ne, chilo la gate. There only one gate. The outside and the gate, you sit. Ni kebuti sit. Outside has one peak. Pagba. The pagba de kazi yinga na la garden na zusong na. If he enters the garden inside, he will make mess up. Right. Mm. That is the mm. the gate gate comes. What you have to do is you just one Mazuna, so the um there's um analogy which is used by the uh our uh, teachers, our masters in the tradition, which is uh, that uh, imagine if we have a very beautiful uh, garden, nice flowers and uh, different plants and fruits and so on. And, uh, and there's one gate to this uh, garden. And uh, there's a uh, and you are kind of stationed at the gate, sitting at the gate. And then there may be a pig who is outside of the garden and the pig wants to come inside the garden. But what you have to do as you're sitting at the gate is as soon as the pig starts to come in and wants to come in, then you uh, uh, hit it on the head with your uh, stick or a club, you know. <clears throat> and if you're able to um, hit that pig on the head before it goes into the garden, then it won't be able to come into the garden, right? And it won't uh, mess up the garden and destroy all the flowers and so on and, the, and the mess up the beautiful garden. So... Uh, this is the same uh, this analogy for what this verse is talking about. That uh, as soon, so the pig has to do, the pig, of course, is, um, uh, is the uh, afflictions, desire and pride, anger, and so on. And so just as uh, you would... Uh, hit that pig on the head as soon as it tries to come into the gate of the garden. In the same way, as soon as the um, afflictions begin to appear in your mind, arise in the mind, uh, you use the uh, mindfulness and vigilance to uh, stop them and before they will get into, the, into your mind. And in the same way, here you can think of the mindfulness and vigilance as being like a club, the weapon, or sorry, the mindfulness and vigilance would be the, uh, the person guarding the gate. And then the weapons are the remedies in the verse. Uh, 
the club would be the remedy. Um, but we can think about it either way. And uh, <clears throat> so if you don't uh, 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 keep out the afflictions from your mind, as soon as they begin to arise, then you will form a habit with the afflictions and it will cause all kinds of problems for you. It will cause problems in your mind and uh, eventually you get habituated to them and so on. Um, and the same way, if you let the pig into the garden and don't hit the pig on the head as soon as it starts to come in, then that pig will come into the garden and destroy everything and uh, in the garden and, and uh, it will mess everything up within the garden. So, um, so this is what the instruction is about, is that uh, you have to stop it as soon as it starts to come stop those afflictions as soon as they start to appear. Uh, that's the word uh, burjom in Tibetan, which they translate as a slay. But it, you can translate a burjom as um, to uh, destroy upon arising. As soon as something starts to come up, you just have that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that so the new mumba kieva dam yeah ने <laughs> Who watch good, bad, who is going. And the Shishin said, then after the Temba, the watchman recognizing, oh, this is the bad one, this is the good one. The Shishin said, this is the one who 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 is the the one who is the one the one the one the one the one the one the no mumba lamsam burjum chitu gure temba na shishi niyona di tap yona mena ta no mumba pangai ge tap no mumba ma jome ge tap yakso di temba da shishi ni gure ando di burjum je ba jase lagne se chaso no mumba ke ma tha to ji mi ji ko ka no mumba pang no mumba pangai yona mena temba da shishi ni na te ni no mumba pang pang to ba ina te ni no mumba ma do komshi chago ma res ande ta jase jambe simba na la me res so um, they, uh, yeah, so this uh, practice of burjom uh, or destroying upon arising, it has to do with uh, that uh, uh, as soon as something starts to arise, um, as it, it's the sense of something that will grow, you know. So as soon as something starts to arise or starts to grow, we have to destroy it. Otherwise, if we don't, destroyed at the beginning, then it will grow into something uh, much more difficult to deal with. Um, <clears throat> and the uh, method that we use, or the kind of uh, techniques or tools that we use to uh, destroy upon arising, uh, to, to uh, stop at these afflictions as soon as they start to arise is, um, mindfulness and vigilance. So mindfulness is here refers to uh, not forgetting uh, what you should do and what you should not do. Not forgetting what you should accept and reject or not forgetting what you should, um, as a, uh, forgetting what, yeah, this is good enough. 
not forgetting what you should uh, take up and abandon. Uh, so this is uh, just remaining aware and being able to remember and keep in mind what is good and what is bad, what you should do and what you should not do. Um, uh, for example, what are the afflictions and uh, how we should uh, avoid the afflictions and so on, is maintaining that awareness. And then uh, uh, this is the mindfulness or uh, jampa. And then the second uh, practice or the kind of tool we use is a vigilance. And translate as vigilance. This is the, called the shejin in Tibetan. So sometimes they translate as conscientiousness. Um, but here they translate it as vigilance. Uh, shejin. So this uh, uh, refers to um, uh, kind of recognizing as it happens uh, whatever uh, uh, um, is coming into your mind which you should uh, avoid or which you should take up. So it's being aware as it happens of the afflictions or the or other uh, also positive things. Um, so uh, to continue with the metaphor of the guard at the door of the uh, mind, hmm, in this uh, uh, in this case, if we're talking about mindfulness and vigilance in particular, then um, the mindfulness would be the guard who knows, who is remembers uh, what he should, what we should do, and what we should not do. And then um, uh, the vigilance would be when something arises in the mind. Uh, for example, if the afflictions, if, if an affliction arises in our mind, then the vigilance is recognizing that at that time that that is the uh, something that we should avoid. Um, so. Uh, yeah, this is what these two terms mean. Mindfulness is uh, remembering what you should do and what you should not do, having that sense. And then vigilance is uh, being aware of what's going on and then acting accordingly. So you have the mindfulness, you know what you should do and not do with the mindfulness. And then when the affliction, <clears throat> for example, comes up in your mind with the vigilance, you're aware of that and then um, able to deal with it properly. So these are the two... Uh, um, main uh, things we use for this practice. The Jemba decision is Teji Teji Jabu Dabusa. Okay, Kaleka for us, the Yoga chair. Kajila Pena, Sova Passe, and Nyendo Passe, Nira Sova Passe, do the Ni Pena Watchman Sido, or Kirkibuta, Dero, Tami Sudu who's going, who's not going, you know, watch men. And like Temba, Hagun, or this one, this one, that one, that one, Temba. They go, Majiba. Majiba. Shishin Sedudani is like, oh, this one. Oh, this one. Oh, Nyendokwasi. The Nyendokwasi, watch men, the order, the Nyendokwasi is a policeman like that. One who watch, like, video CC camera, and like that. Uh, and one goes and say, "Oh, you are right. You are this okay, like that." Camera uh, yeah. <laughs> is like a who watches the this is camera mm. very carefully, is without forgetting. Ra kope camera sin. And she sin seedi ko one ko rang ha ko ni o ta tire di mare di tire di resen ko. Zimianya. Oh, that's zimiano. So these two is um. They're not uh, kind of really cut and dried. Or, um, it's uh, not always easy to make a clear line between them, define very clearly which one is which, mindfulness and vigilance. Um, they're very similar and maybe it's overlap a little bit. Um, 
but uh, there's another analogy uh, to illustrate what these two refer to, what mindfulness and visions refer to, <coughs> which is um, that uh, mindfulness is, is compared to a watchman and vigilance is compared to uh, the, I, I don't know, this, no, it wouldn't it be a policeman, but it's the one who actually will go and then uh, um, take care of any problem that is seen by the watchman. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so mindfulness would be like somebody who is always watching, uh, somebody who's uh, keeping guard over uh, a gate, for example, and they may have different cameras and so on, showing the what he's watching over. So he knows, uh, and he also will know which who should come in and who should not come in, uh, and who, uh, uh, yeah, who should come in, who should not come in, and uh, who they may have to go after and take care of, who they can let go. Um, the watchman who's mindfulness. And then the vigilance, <clears throat> as soon as the watchman will see uh, somebody uh, that shouldn't be there, then the vigilance would be like the uh, guard whose job it is to go and take care of that person. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it, in whatever way is necessary at that time. Mm -hmm. Demba said this any longer la majeba said this any co is not forgetting he always uh, protects like a the yaho dubula demba majeba said a longer with name majeba. She shin said the longer with name majeba crang the hagoni gumji she shin she shin that means he knows he knows that temba. Mm. What you not forgetting, let's say coffee, and not forgetting, I just uh, uh, mindful. And she, 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 na, that me, the day, gala, coffee, imba, me, ha, ko, chat. Coffee, imba, me, ha, ko. First, temba is majeba, temba. Coffee, so, majeba, shao, shao, ra. And it, the jela, the temba, the jela, automatic, she, she, come. Oh, the coffee, there, so, it's no doubt. The gatekeeper, the chief watchman, like the CCTV camera, who's going, who's not going, right? And she should means he knows the watchman, but going out, down here, there, but the kaga, the policeman, though, say, oh, you are doing wrong. This is not good. If they say emotion, you do bad karma, mm -hmm. you know, it's not good. I better mm -hmm. don't touch. Mm -hmm. But temba is just mindful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean it's no. Mm -hmm. But shejin sena temba ge gangla shejin kurang done o di dorjare di langjare di nyumongbare di geware se di hakubre hakuwa tila shejin sera temba sena ko mindful but this is bad this is good yeah temba ge temba sumni dekura but shejin sena this is hundred percent he knows this is bad this is good. <laughs> so um, the mindfulness or jamba is like uh, being this is the awareness it's a more kind of a general awareness of what is good and bad what we should do and what we should not do <clears throat> um, like the watchman who is watching at the uh, TV um, cameras uh, he uh, he has this like a general awareness of uh, what uh, who should be there and who should not be there he's watching over that situation and then the uh, vigilance, um, also conscientiousness, and the conscientiousness or shejin. This is uh, 
uh, like the person who will go after 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 he already knows what is good and what is bad and what we should do and not do uh, for example who should be there who should not be there at the gate <clears throat> um, because of the because the mindfulness is already there then that quality of vigilance is automatically uh will automatically uh, be there at the same time. Um, and uh, uh, because when you're aware of what is going, you're aware of what you should do and what you should not do, then that quality of uh, understanding, oh, this is when anger arises, for example, oh, this is something I should not do, that quality of vigilance will oh, well, naturally be there. Yeah. So, so if you're doing bad thing, if you do bad thing, uh, you you will know very clearly that is bad thing. You know, Salvo, mm -hmm. clearly the notion of that bad thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or you are doing that is good, they say, oh, this is I'm doing good thing. The notion of that, the, the doing good, Salvo, clearly. No, I mean that. Knowing that actually the conscientious. Oh. Hako gain dila. Salpo hako gain. Ya kochi na le, pita chi na, nyuma bale na le, male na le. Salpo hako gain dila. Shishin. Oh, shishin. Ah. Okay. So the uh, mindfulness is uh, uh, again knowing what we should do and not do. But then. Uh, uh, so we have the clear sense of what we should not do and what we should do with the mindfulness. And then the uh, vigilance is uh, being uh, uh, clearly aware uh, in the moment that this is something good or bad. It's like a more like a, um, it's that sense of having a very clear awareness uh, in the moment and dealing with the uh, what you should do not do in the moment the vigilance um, so uh, yeah so in the also continuing with the metaphor of the watchman the vigilance it would be the one who has no doubt about if somebody is there that shouldn't be there um, at the gate, for example, um, that vigilance would be the person who he already knows this person should not be there, and then he will go and uh, go after the person. So it's kind of it's not easy to kind of distinguish these two because they're just very similar. Um, but this is uh, the basic idea. So then, uh, so therefore, this the practice of all the bodhisattvas to slay attachment and the rest, the mind's afflictions, or uh, more literally, um, it's the practice of the bodhisattvas to destroy upon arising the attachment and the rest of mind's affliction. So as soon as those attachments and those afflictions arise <coughs> in the mind, we use um, uh, these qualities of the mindfulness and vigilance to uh, take care of them and to stop them before they, uh, before they really get a chance to arise. So this is the this is the practice of Bodhisattvas. <laughs> Chalopa, Sundu, Sadu, Tawa, the Dorma, Gandu, Chalam, Chijija, Rangu, Timi, Nekab, Chida, Shee, 
Hindu Chenda Shijin then by Hindu by Jasalam is. So, yeah, this is that was the verse on uh, how to eliminate one's own afflictions, to take care of one's own afflictions. This verse we just uh, went over. And now comes the verse that has to do with um, uh, this, uh, to bring a, who has to do with bringing about the good of others, with benefiting others, um, using uh, mindfulness and vigilance, or they translate here as mindfulness and alertness. So the verse goes, in short, no matter what one might be doing, by examining always the status of one's mind with continuous mindfulness and alertness to bring about the good of others. This is the practice of all the bodhisattvas. ตําบะดอนนาจลัมจีเจียงเซดุซานิตาดิกมุลเชบิกิมารังดอนรังกิญโยมบาชินาเรพาจินทูกิญโยมิญามเลจินาเรนิดอลชิงซุงบิชุช
So wherever we are and whatever we're doing, whatever one would, might be doing, uh, whether you're doing uh, uh, something with your body, a bodily practice, or with your speech, uh, talking, using your speech, or doing mental practice with your mind, meditating, and so on. Um, uh, whatever you might be doing, we always have to examine our motivation. The motivation is the key in this uh, uh, context with this teaching here, the motivation is the key. And so uh, we should always examine our motivation and also always examine the status of our mind, as it says in the second line. Yangi <laughs> Watchmen <laughs> Nyamne <laughs> So, um, mm, yeah, it says uh, whatever we might be doing. So, uh, whether we are uh, using our body, doing frustrations, for example, or whether we're using our mind, reciting mantras, or uh, talking to somebody, or sorry, using our speech, or setting mantras or talking to somebody, or using our mind, uh, meditating, this kind of thing, um, whether we're meditating on a deity or whatever it may be, whatever we're doing, uh, we should always uh, have these two uh, qualities of mindfulness and vigilance. We should continually uh, have those and also we should be continually using as mindfulness and vigilance or here's those transit uh, mindfulness and vigilance mindfulness and alertness it's the same word in Tibetan as Shishin, vigilance and alertness they translate as uh, in English um, now we should always use those always have those continually and check uh, the status of our mind, as it says here, examine the status of our mind. If it, uh, what is going in our mind, is it a virtuous state of mind or is it a non-virtuous state of mind? Uh, or is it under the sway of the afflictions and so on? Um, and so we should continually, whatever we're doing, we should continually be examining our mind with mindfulness and alertness and checking uh, uh, what is going on in our mind. And uh, also in all circumstances continually, whatever we're doing, we should always have the motivation of bringing about the good of others. We should always be working for the good of others. Um, 
whatever we're doing with our body, with our speech, and with our mind, um, uh, we should always have this motivation of the Mahayana, the bodhicitta, uh, that uh, we are, whatever we're doing, we're doing it for the good of others. So this is the practice of the, of the bodhisattvas. Ram Lugi Gone Kare, the Kiawachi and Yapunam Gitan, the Chopa Kandi Chiwa and Nare, Shingi, Shindu, Shingi, Tunla, Shingi Tandagi, Tabla Jumpa. Magi Gone Kisa Kari, the Sheba Inaya, the rounding to the Mashiba, Shingi Dun Tabla Jumpa. My Yigi Gone, some of the Tangan the Inaya, and so whatever we're doing with our body uh whatever kind of action we're doing and whatever thing we may be showing with our body or doing a bodily practice. For example, we should always uh, uh, be motivated for benefiting others. It should always be a part of uh, some way to bring about the benefit of others. And similarly, whatever we're doing with our speech, uh, reciting mantras or talking, uh, to uh, someone, um, we should always have that motivation of benefiting others. And uh, uh, when we speak also, uh, it should always be uh, in some way, as a part of some way, uh, uh, in some way it should be uh, directed towards uh, bringing about the benefit of others. And then also with the mind, <clears throat> whatever we're thinking about, meditating, for example, or just thinking, um, this should also, we should also uh, uh, have the motivation that this will in some way bring about the benefit of others, to have that be a part of the, a way to bring about the benefit of others. As the verse goes, that if you, your motivation is good, then your path will be good, your path will, will go well if your motivation is good. And if your motivation is bad, then your path will not go well and so on. So we should always have this uh, uh, motivation of the bodhicitta benefiting others. This is the practice of all the bodhisattvas. Mm. Mm. So, uh, even if we can't directly benefit others, um, with whatever we're doing, uh, at the very least, uh, what we can do, which is also really good to do, is uh, uh, make sure that we don't harm others on the one hand. And then on the other hand, we can also, what we should also do is uh, uh, have that motivation behind what we do or have the wish uh, that what we do will benefit others in some way. Um, whatever we do with our body, with our speech, with our mind. Um, so even if we can't uh, directly benefit others uh, all the time, what we're doing, if we can at least do these, we can at least do these two. These two are very good to do, which is to avoid harming others and then uh, have that. Uh, motivation and wish that, oh, whatever I do now, may it uh, benefit others in some way. 
<clears throat> so that is the verse on uh, bringing about the benefit of others, verse number 36. And now the verse number 37 is uh, dedicating the merit for complete awakening. So that says the practice of all the bodhisattvas is to dedicate towards enlightenment, all the virtue to be gained through making effort in these ways. Mm -hmm. With wisdom that is purified entirely of the three conceptual spheres, so as to dispel the sufferings of the infinity of beings. Uh, Mean <laughs> Uh, Sami <laughs> Gewa ตกไทยออกมาได้ดีอินโดคอร์สนัมเบอร์มีตัวเสียดับดีจางจุงมาวัดตัวสังกิจิโกฟังได้จางจุสังกิสินเจทามจิจางจุยโกฟังทบิช
second and the fourth line in English, all the virtue to be gained through making effort in these ways to dispel the suffering of the infinity, infinity of beings. <clears throat> these two lines um, teach the uh, defiled um, dedication or the impure dedication, you can say. So this, uh, this has to do with taking all the virtue that we have gained uh, through the effort of studying this text and practicing this text all the way from the beginning, from the uh, virtue in the beginning, the introduction of the text and going for refuge uh, and the preliminary practices and uh, the uh, uh, six pra practices of the six paramitas and how to apply those practices of the six paramitas to ourselves and so on. Uh, we take all of those, uh, all of that uh, virtue and uh, then uh, dedicate it for the purpose of dispelling the sufferings of the infinity of the beings. Um, and then when we get to the uh, dedication, the pure or undefiled dedication, this uh, has to do, or generally we can't really do this because we have not uh, uh, realized the uh, nature of reality or emptiness um, but this is the, the pure dedication or the undefiled dedication is um, practiced by generally the bodhisattvas. Uh, sometimes you may can say also the shravakas may practice, but generally we say it's the uh, uh, bodhisattvas who have attained the bodhisattva levels, um, those uh, 10 bodhisattva levels from the first to the tenth and also the buddhas the awakened uh, beings those uh, kind of people or uh, beings those kind of practitioners uh, are the ones who will do the uh, pure dedication or the undefiled dedication and uh, but for our part uh what we can do um, is to uh, uh, rejoice in these kinds of dedications and try to make a dedication in a similar way to them and say, oh, we, we rejoice in the pure dedication of these uh, bodhisattvas and buddhas and so on. And uh, try and uh, kind of make the, uh, uh, just have that uh, thought that we make the same type of dedication that they make. Um, and then if we do that, then the virtue that we have gained <clears throat> is like a drop of water. And then the virtue of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas who make these pure dedications is like the ocean. And so when we put our dedication, which is like a drop of water, into that ocean of water of the dedication of Buddhist, Buddhists and Bodhisattvas, then it will become one with their dedication uh, dedications, become part of that ocean of the Buddhist and Bodhisattvas dedication. And in the same way that the, uh, that water, drop of water of our dedication will then not uh, dry up, it won't disappear uh, because it's part of the ocean. So in the same way that if you, but on the other hand, if we were to put our virtue into the palm of our hand, then it would quickly dry up and disappear. Uh, so this is why we should immediately put it into the ocean of the dedication. Mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Drop the general Labagansana, wind, many conditions. Wind blows, or maybe some heat comes, mm. then dries. Then give a tata. Give a Yeah, so it's very important to dedicate the merit. 
um, as soon as we finish doing the practice, whatever practice we're doing, uh, it's really important to dedicate the merit because if we don't do that within one, two, three, four uh, hours, uh, uh, sooner or later, that uh, uh, virtue will be lost by one condition or another. Just as if you have a drop of water in the, your hand, it will be dried out, or if there's some wind, wind will dry it out, or it will fall off your hand, and so on. So it's really important. Yeah. In the Gewa Zebi Yushi series, Gewa Zetwe, 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 never check the condition Yushi. Yushi Gimami, that's all the Shedan Re, and he Jiga Juba Re, Nibat. Somebody did it. Mm, wrong intention. Mola. Mm. No, no, yeah, so then as far as the conditions that will uh, exhaust the virtue, um, there's four causes of, of virtue. Uh, the That's right. I mean, did it show up? Ah, moment. So uh, there's a four um, causes for... Uh, virtue to be lost or virtue to be destroyed. And these are, the first is uh, uh, anger. And the second is to regret the virtue or virtue. And the third is to make a kind of a dedication of the virtue with the wrong motivation, with the bad motivation. And then uh, the fourth is if we uh, show off our virtue. Cannot show off your virtue. And uh, cannot be regret also because if you do something good or uh, small, but uh, it's good action, but then later on you may regret, oh, I shouldn't do this, uh, I should do that. And then you will destroy your marriage. Same thing. I think show up is not good. Uh, many of people uh, nowadays uh, they showing oh, my older looks please and post posting in Facebook so huge and uh, I'm carrying very expensive malas and I'm carrying very good damaru. I'm bringing so much so on so on like tax. I received Dokshin Mahamudra. Show up is not good. You will destroy your marriage as well. Then uh, wrong intention also, not many, but uh, some I think people may have. Wrong intention means like you're doing good marriage, but your intention to destroy your uh, some kind of other's uh, business, someone who doing is competition like that. You're doing puja, you know, some and Nepal has some people like this. You invite monks to do some clear obstacle. Actually, main obstacle is competition. Next, there's a one shop. You have the shop, same thing, but you are that shop is doing so well, your shop is not selling well, and you invite monks to do puja to make their business low, and you are increased more. <laughs> that is the wrong intention. I think there are many people like this. Uh, this also destroys the, your marriage, it's a one of the cause, and uh, I think this is a few things. You before your dedication, you make sure that you make dedicate first, and then later on, this many things comes is okay because your marriage is already in the ocean, already safe. And the is the drink, uh, okay, so that's the dedication and this is also the practice of the bodhisattvas as described here is to dedicate the merit to awakening. <laughs>
so uh, after this there's uh, a few verses on the uh, some uh, you know, features of the text and so on and the different concluding uh, uh, remarks he makes in these uh, last verses. So we can go over the, these in the next uh, session or two when I uh, so the next session or two uh, we will do um, question and answer. Yeah. That time I will, there's a few verses is not included inside the 37 but uh, more like uh, uh, the uh, uh, some kind of sharing the Gasim Muju told me himself why he write this book and what is uh, the uh, how to call it what's the source of source the... of the text and like the sutra tantra or whatever that he mentioned and why he put what is the essence of the, this text actually there's a few verses verses and uh, we can uh, go through uh, when during the question and answer session, maybe next week or something, I think they will announce you. And uh, based on the, this dedication, we all do uh, uh, some dedication for Quran. The Goni, Pacho, Shu, Kenamba, Shu, Yamle, Yambo, Cheva, Negi, and She, and Yamne Kazaji, Mihao, Mabo, Chi, Nisha, Chi, Tama, Bango, of course. Oh, okay. So now we will do a, a special uh, dedication of all the virtue we have gained uh, studying this text from the beginning of the uh, course. And uh, all of you have uh, studied the text and whatever you have done to put it into practice also. And I myself have explained the text to Gula says. So uh, now we will do a dedication of all of that merit together. Give